And there we go. We're recording. So thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for joining me. I'm Shauna Sue from Crooked Door Studio. Crooked Door Studio is located in Uptown Marysville in the historic part of Marysville. Like I mentioned a minute ago uh, before the recording started, um, thank you guys so much for donating to the studio. You're the reason that I'm able to have my space ready when fingers crossed in May, we'll be able to get back for some public classes. So I'm still kind of playing it by ear, but right around Memorial Day, that's my goal. So we'll see, you know, as with life, everything changes and we're just gonna roll with it and see what happens. But even after uh, we go back to in-studio, in-person classes, I'll still be doing the recordings and I'm, I'm still gonna try to Zoom. My husband is working out a really cool camera option to hang there. Um, so even while I'm at the studio painting in class, I'll still have you guys with me virtually. So I think that'll be kind of cool. We'll see how it goes. So let's see, before we get started, I wanna go through our supply list. Um, I wanna make sure that you have everything you need, that you have a setup very similar to mine, because what makes me crazy when I start painting is if I don't have something that I feel like I should have had, and I have to get up and leave the room and go find something. So I have listed out in the supplies, in the, um, I have listed out in the Zoom chat, a list of supplies that you need for tonight. There's a list of colors, a list of brushes that you need, um, has it all listed out. If there's something there that you don't have, don't worry about it, it'd be fine, we'll wing it, it'd be okay. Uh, sometimes we talk about very specific colors, um, especially where red is involved. Not concerned about that tonight because we're I'm not mixing purple. And that's the time that I really get concerned about red. So we don't even have red tonight. We're not, we're not even gonna talk about it. So whatever colors you have will be fine, okay? So let's see, first things first, since you're painting at home, I'm painting at home, right? We're here in my, in my lovely tiny home. Let's take a moment and look around and make sure there's nothing around you that you're super concerned about if you get paint on right? The paint that I'm using and the paint that I know a lot of you are using is acrylic paint. Acrylic paint is lovely because it's water cleanup, but acrylic paint is a pain in the butt because when it dries, it essentially turns to plastic. So if you get it in fibers, it's real hard to get out. Now, if you get it in fibers, like if you get it in your shirt or you get it on your carpet, leave it alone for now and then later come back to it when it's dry and use either Murphy's oil soap, leave some Murphy's oil soap soak on it for a little bit like overnight or uh, rubbing alcohol, leave that soak overnight and then come back tomorrow with the toothbrush and clean it up. But with that said, let's take a look around, make sure you don't have anything you're super worried about that if you were to get paint on it that you'd get in trouble, okay? I don't know why, but in the last several classes I've referenced me getting in trouble. Y'all know I never get in trouble at home, right? We know who rules the roost at home. I can say that because my husband's not here right now. <laughs> okay, so I have um, I have a paint shirt on. I've got this shirt has a little bit of paint on it already. I have an apron on. I've looked around, checked my surroundings. Everything's good. I'm not concerned about getting paint on anything. Okay, move this a little. Okay, next canvas. So I'm painting on a 16 by 20 canvas. 16 by 20 primed and stretched. Stretched means it's stretched, wrapped around and stapled on the back, okay? I love these canvases because I can paint my edges as I go. And then it looks like my painting is wrapped all the way around. Then later, I don't have to frame it. I don't have to do anything with it. If I like it and I wanna display it, I can pick a spot and just set it there, it's done. Doesn't have to be framed because that painting is wrapped all the way around. Do you like how I said, if I like it? So this is the part where I tell you that art is all about expression and having fun and just letting go for a little bit. I like to tell people this is like 90% process and like 10% product. That number changes every time, by the way. But the important part to know is that this is about process. This is about enjoying the process, experimenting, playing with colors, playing with textures and techniques and having fun. And if you enjoy that, then keep playing, right? That's what art's all about is experimentation. And then at the end of your experimentation, if you walk out of here with a cool painting, that's a bonus. 
right? If you paint over it and try again, it's a learning process. So I encourage you to keep playing and keep, keep playing, painting, keep having fun, okay? So I will try to remind you as you go to paint your edges, you can paint them or not. There really is no in-between though. If you start painting the edges, I would encourage you to finish painting the edges. You don't have to paint them at all if you don't want. I feel like I'm like beating this into the ground. So I'm just gonna move on, okay? Um, don't start painting your edges and then stop halfway through because it just looks messy and unfinished. Okay, so apron, paint shirt, canvas. Our painting that we have tonight, our inspiration picture, right? Our lovely, um, our lovely um, watering can. All I think was pitcher, our watering can full of flowers. In my brain, it works well to do this on a landscape canvas, on a horizontal. That's not what you want, then don't do that. If you wanna flip your canvas and move it vertical and have big flowers coming out the top, well, then that's what you do. It's your painting, right? Make it your own. But I'm gonna do mine horizontal. Let's talk about what I have over here beside my easel. I have a mason jar. I like to use something heavy. I'm less likely to knock it over. Halfway full of cool or cold water, never warm or hot. This always wants to be cool or cold. I've got some paper towels under there to blot my brushes off on. And then let's talk about brushes. Okay, I have a big, wa a big uh, oval wash brush. Yours might be flat, yours might be angled, but you wanna find the biggest brush you have. We're gonna use this for our background. And I have two of these. I have, um, this one is technically the same brush, but it's been used a lot. So it's very splayed out. I'm gonna use this one for the background because it's gonna hold a lot of paint because it's all splayed out. This one, because it's still brand new and collapsed, not brand new, you can see, but, it's all collapsed down. It won't hold as much paint. So I'm going to use this guy because he's going to hold a lot of paint, but they're essentially the same brush. I also have a medium brush. This one's about a quarter inch wide, but if I flip him skinny ways, right, he's skinny that way, he's wide this way. Again, yours might be flat, might be round like filbert, might be angled, but some kind of a medium brush. And then a pointy brush, okay? We're gonna use this one for details. We're gonna use this one for, um, for the stems and our flowers, okay? So I'm gonna do the whole painting with those three brushes. Something else you might have in your, in your art kit as we've all been painting on our own home, at home. Um, I know we're all building up our art kits. Something else you might have is a paint pen. I always keep a paint pen in my bag uh, because I, I feel every painting should be signed. When you're completely done with it, you want to get your name on it. It can be on the front down in the corner, or it can be on the back with a paint pen or a Sharpie. But I know I'm, I've been painting since I was 10 years old. I am really bad at signing with a brush. Always have been. Detail work is not my strong suit. So I keep a paint pen to sign my paintings with. Okay. And paint. Let's talk paint tonight. So here's what my palette looks like tonight. So let's start here. I have white. I'm using block out white. You might be using titanium white. That's fine. So a white. I have chrome yellow. It's just a bright yellow. Any yellow will do. I have chrome orange. Again, any orange. Phthalo blue and phthalo green. I love these two because mixed together, they're gonna to give us that really pretty turquoise aqua color for our, I'm gonna call it a pitcher all night. So I'm just gonna do that for our pitcher, right? And then black, some black for my background, okay? The very last thing I wanna do, I wanna give you a roadmap for where we're gonna go because if I were attending a class, I would wanna know how this is all gonna shake out, right? A little bit of a control freak. So I would wanna know the direction that we're heading in. So the way this is gonna to work tonight, we're gonna to paint that background first, right? We're gonna use um, probably more white than black, 
but a mixture of black and white. And we're going to get it very streaky. We're going to have it look like um, old boards, right? And then we're going to get some lines in it. We're going to break it up into it looks like five different sections two, three, four, five. And they even have like little nail marks they've put in with black paint. So we'll do all of that. And then something that's not in the supply list that you may need to go grab real quick is a blow dryer, because then we're not going to be able to move on until that background's dry. So with that said, we're not going to put a ton of paint on the background. We don't want big globs that are going to take forever to dry. We're going to smooth it all out nice and even. So then once our background's dry, we'll come in with our pitcher, our watering can, right? And we'll put that on there. We'll do a little shading, a little highlighting. And then we'll get our flowers in there. So we're going to put some daisies up in there. And then I'll talk about some different flowers too. I'm feeling like I want like little wheat looking flowers up in there, something really small and delicate. I might even do like some little yellow daisies. So this is just an inspiration. And my goal tonight is just to show you techniques and then you go with it, you make it your own, okay? And Marie, just like that, 715, like clockwork, so weird. Okay, let's get started started. So decide now, are you going to keep your uh, canvas horizontal? Are you going to do it vertical? You can do it however you want. Okay. I'm going to keep mine horizontal because I imagine my, my picture here, and then I can put all kinds of flowers up in here, right? So my picture, right? Top of my picture, right about there. And then I can fill this in with flowers. You can flip it up vertical if you want. That's entirely up to you, okay? But the first thing I'm going to do is paint that entire background. And I know if I keep my canvas sideways while I'm trying to paint side to side, my brush strokes tend to go downhill. So to make life easier on myself, I'm going to flip it vertical because I have a better chance of getting nice vertical brush strokes, straight brush strokes, if I flip it vertical. That's just me, that's how my brain works. Okay, all of your brushes that you're gonna use tonight, take those, put them in the water cup, okay? That's a really good reminder that when you're done with the brush, he goes back in there with his friends. So now find your big brush that you're gonna use for your background. Again, I'm using my brush that's old and it's kind of splayed out because he's going to hold a lot of paint. I'm tap, tap, tapping him in the bottom of the cup, softening him up a little bit. Then I'm going to dry him off on my paper towel, push the water out. Now, anytime you take paint, you're always going to go in the edge, edge of the puddle, never the middle of the puddle. So I'm going to take a healthy amount of white. And maybe to start, maybe half that much black. Zerp. Look at all that paint on there. Isn't that lovely? And now I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start going. I'm gonna go up and down. Oh, see, that was a lot of black. I might want more white. I'm gonna cover the entire canvas like this. Now remember what I said. We can't move on until that's dry. So make sure you're not leaving behind big goobers, big rolls of paint, right? It's okay for it to be streaky. Streaky is good, actually. Streaky helps it look more, um, more wood, a little more rustic. But in those streaks, you don't want to leave behind big rolls of paint that are going to take forever to dry. Okay, so let's paint the whole canvas that way. So big old chunk of white, little bit of black, long brush strokes. And do you see how I'm going? Top all the way to the bottom. Because every time I pick up and put down my brush, I'm gonna see a mark where I picked it up or put it down. So you wanna do a long sweeping brush stroke. Ooh, look how streaky that is. That's lovely. 
Now, acrylic paint blends while it's wet. Once it's dry, it will not blend. So do you see how I'm getting this just how I want it? And then slowly moving across because I don't want to get, I don't want to jump around because I don't want to start picking up half dried paint. So I'm going to get this just the way I want it and then slowly work my way across. <sighs> and I feel like I have a breathe all day. So this is my reminder, especially for my sweet friend, Alicia, take a big deep breath, let it out, let the day wash away, let the week wash away. Paint the whole background. And I even thought as I was doing this, I don't think I'm going to do it because I want the contrast of that turquoise on gray, but I thought it would be kind of cool if you grabbed a tiny, tiny bit of blue to mix in your background. If you're gonna do that though, you have to do it while it's wet to blend it in. And don't forget your edges. Long, smooth brush strokes. Um, again, in case you missed it, I'm painting this vertically because I have um, I have a tendency if I want to get perfect side to side parallel to the bottom brush strokes, I have a tendency to paint downhill. I do that in my writing too. When I'm like freehand writing a letter, I'll write downhill. So to make sure my lines stay nice and even, I'm painting it vertically because I know me and I know I have a better chance of getting nice straight lines if I paint it vertically. But when I'm done, I'm gonna flip it sideways. Shouldn't say sideways, I should say I'm gonna flip it right side. A weird. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> I just looked around and saw you, Lynn. I love that you're not messing around. You've got paintbrush in one hand, wine in the other. That's my girl, right? <laughs> so if you have a question, don't hesitate to pop it in the chat box on Zoom. I have my laptop set up beyond my camera. So if you see me looking off to the side, that's what I'm doing is monitoring the chat box over there. So if you have a question, pop it over there. I'll do my best to monitor and answer. And I feel like we've started a fun game. When you get your background painted, let's see. Um, I'll check in with everyone at 7.30. And then if I feel like we're gonna need another five minutes after that but I'll check in at 7.30. That gives you seven minutes to, to get that gray on there. So when you're done with your background, you'll have to let me know, like who do we think is participating from furthest away? Are our, are our Canadian friends on here? Our Ontario friends? Do we have Florida in the house tonight? Seattle is Seattle. Seattle's not been here for a while. So who would be furthest away from central Ohio?
Remember, as you're doing this, long, smooth brush strokes and get your edges. If you've decided to paint your edges, go ahead and get those as you go. Get over here and get this sign. Hey, Marie, remind me to tell you about um, my plan for my birthday. Oh, that's lovely. I know it's just background, right? And it's just, just black and white, but oh, paint on my face. Like that's never happened before. Um, but man, I love the feel of paint in the brush. Always have. Like I want a little, some little white, some white streaks here. Okay, again, we can't move on until this is dry. So make sure you're not leaving any big, big goobers of paint, but you don't have to go to the blow dryer yet. Not yet. We're gonna put our, um, our board breaks on there before we go to the blow dryer. There we go. Okay, I've reached the I should stop touching it portion of the evening. So when you're done, brush in water cup. And again, you don't want to overwork it. You want it to look kind of streaky because that's going to help it look a little more like a weathered wood. But if you want it more smooth, then by all means do that. Again, it's your painting, right? Make it what you want it to be. But I like the idea of the streakiness in there. I think that'll help it look a little more like um, weathered wood. Nobody in the chat, you guys are very quiet tonight. I feel it's been a long week for everyone. So many heads nodding when I said that. It's all right, you guys do you. We don't have to chat tonight. <laughs> But remember to breathe, oh, big exhales, pull your shoulders down from your ears, right? Don't sit all hunched. Alicia, I feel like we need to do some neck, neck rolls. Right, doesn't that feel good? Oh, what do we need to do? <gasps> Little purple flowers. I like that. Are you thinking like, like, like little forget-me-nots? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See, I was thinking about doing that with a different color. The ones that look like wheat, kind of. Yeah. You and I, I don't know what we just did, but you know, like these. <laughs> and I knew what you meant. <laughs> oh. Ooh, Gretchen, I didn't see you on here, honey yellow pitcher with purple flowers that'll be oh there you are you were hiding from me hi honey that'll be gorgeous so you're gonna have to add a lot of white to your yellow to get coverage right because that yellow is too transparent so you're gonna have to add a lot of white to it but i love that because yellow and white are complementary right 
That would be beautiful. That's why I'm kind of thinking about um, some orange, some little orange flowers, because if my if my pitcher is my watering can is a little more blue, and then I get some little tiny orange flowers up there, complimentary, right? Opposites on the color wheel. So it looks like everybody's still painting their backgrounds. How about, how about we give it another five minutes? Flail wildly if you need five minutes. I see flailing, okay, okay, five more minutes. Carry on, Lori. <laughs> so 7.35, I'll check back in. So again, don't forget, if you want to chat over in the chat box, you can pop questions over there. And I'm curious as to who's furthest away. Maybe we're all just Ohio tonight. I shouldn't say just Ohio. I'm pretty proud to be an Ohioan. I've traveled all over the place, but I tell you, there's something special about Ohio. And maybe it's because I'm born and raised here, but, oh, Ontario, there you are, Ontario. Oh, I was a little worried. I'm waiting for you to say Ontario, Ohio, because there is a little town called Ontario, Ohio. But no, like real Ontario, like, like Canadian. Aw, oh, thumbs up, thank you. <laughs> so you win furthest away. There is no prize, by the way, but you win. Thank you for clapping with me, Lynn. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh. Okay, so again, 735, we're going to move on. When's whose birthday? Oh, my birthday, Emily? When's my birthday? May 3rd. I love my birthday. Spring birthdays, in my opinion, because I am a spring baby, spring birthdays are the best. They're far enough away from Christmas. The weather's not too hot yet. Oh, are you putting crocuses in the bucket? Or no, do you have crocuses outside? Yes and yes, right? I have crocuses outside too. My little purple crocuses. You could totally do crocuses. So if you're going to do crocuses, are they going to be purple? Okay. They have that little bit of yellow in them, right? You're going to have to let the purple dry so you don't get poop. Right? Okay. You guys, we've been doing this far too long when we can have a conversation <laughs> by just like hand gestures and, you know, these things. <laughs> One year, can you believe it? One whole year, doesn't seem real. So I was looking at the timeline on my social media and Friday the 13th in March, that was our last class in the studio. That's when things were really starting to get real when Ohio was shutting down. And then on the 16th, that Monday, um, I made the decision, I got together with with a bunch of friends, right, Marie? And we all talked about it. We're like, crap, what do I do? And that Monday we made that decision on the 16th. Made the decision to shut down, but then hadn't decided what we were gonna do at that point. And it was shortly thereafter, it was a couple of weeks after we went virtual. Just doesn't seem real. But I tell you what, man, when I go into the studio to pack supplies, I am so looking forward to getting back in there. Oh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good to be back in there. So Emily, you asked me when my birthday is, when's your birthday? Are you a May baby? No, not a May baby. Oh, oh, January 25th. How is that having a winter birthday? 
No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. My mama's birthday was January 11th and she hated it because, you know, raised, raised poor. She was a poor kid when she was raised. And there was never, there was never enough money for Christmas. And then by the time her birthday rolled around, yeah, by the time mama's birthday rolled around, whatever little money they had was already spent on Christmas, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Do you do a half birthday? You need to do a July, what would it be? July 25th or June 25th? July 25th. Anyway, you need to do a half birthday. I'm a firm believer in celebrating birthdays. Every year that you can hang on to this planet that's spinning wildly out of control, every year you can hang on is a success. You got to celebrate that. Okay, it is 7.35. So... Oh, on my birthday? No, I think my birthday's on a Monday, isn't it? M May 3rd? Marie, when's my birthday? <laughs> Is it on a Monday? <gasps> oh, yeah, yeah. That's okay, I have a plan for my birthday. Okay, so it's 7.35. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. And after this step, we're gonna want a blow dryer, okay? So I wanna go ahead and put in those little black lines for the boards. And it's okay if your canvas is still a little wet because sometimes when we do this for the first time, things get a little haywire, a line gets a little thick. It's gonna be really easy to fix it, to smush it back into the background and try again. So our original painting has, looks like five boards, okay? We have this one in the middle, and then we have two above and two below. So it's up to you on how many boards you put. But I think I'm gonna stick with five. I think that's a good, that's a good number. And my boards are gonna be on a 16 by 20 canvas, my boards are gonna be about four fingers wide, ish, okay? So we're gonna use black and to get that black to roll down the canvas nice and easy or across, however, again, I'm keeping mine vertical because if I flip it sideways and I try to do horizontal lines, they'll go downhill on me. Because again, I've met me, I know me. So find your smallest brush. So I've got my, my fine liner brush and I'm using a number five. Yours might be a little bigger, might be a little smaller. It's whatever you're comfortable with. I've even seen some people use a brush that's wide, that's bigger, but they can get a really nice chisel edge on it. So the most important part is having, being able to get that nice fine line. So your brush may be big, you may have a, a wide brush, but you have to be able to get that really fine line on there. And by using this number five brush, I'm gonna just gently drag it across the canvas and I'm not gonna use more than, boop, that much of the bristles. Boop. If I bend those bristles, pressing too hard, I'm gonna wind up with a big fat line. So I have my pointy brush, nice and dry. I'm gonna take a drip of water on just the bristles, a drip, and I'm gonna come over here in the edge of this black, and with that drip, thin that down a little bit. Sound effects are always helpful. And then twirl him, get him to a nice point. And remember, these are old weathered boards, so those lines don't have to be solid, right? They might pick up and then, and then come back down. Entirely up to you. Here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and put my first one in and very gently drag it down the canvas. Ooh, that's a wiggly board. 
you know what? I'm okay with that. It's a little wiggly. So again, I want to break this up so it looks like five boards. See this one. Because if I go up, I'll have more luck. And remember, if you really don't like this look at all, don't do it. Stop what you're doing. We've already used black in the background. So add a little bit of white and just shush it back in. Okay. So one, two. Three, one more. Gotta thin that down a little bit. My feet's getting a little thick. Remember, it'll flow a lot easier across the canvas if you thin it down a little bit. Woo, that got weird. Okay. I want to go back and thicken these up a little in a couple places, make it look like um, um, where the boards aren't quite fitting together nice and even. I like having it heavier in a couple places and non existent in a couple other places. We don't want it to be perfect. We want it to look nice and rustic. Okay. Okay. I want to be respectful of everyone's time. So I'm going to go ahead and put my um, put my nail holes in or my my nail heads, and then at ten till we'll move on. So that gives you nine nine ish minutes to put those nail heads on. I'll show you how to do that. Get to a blow dryer and come back so we can start on that picture. Now remember, if if I'm moving too fast, if it's just not flowing, take a break. I'm recording it. You can come back to the video like five minutes after class is over the video will be ready okay so i'm going to put my nail heads in and to do that i'm going to use my biggest brush counterintuitive right my biggest brush and i'm going to use the other end of it so there are two well this one there might just be one but two and two and two and i think this one might just be one Use the other end in my black. One there. There go. Two here. And I'm keeping these because I don't really want them to be the focus of the painting. I'm keeping these within about a finger width of the edge of the canvas. So I'm keeping them pretty close to the edge. And I'm gonna put those here at the, the top and I'm also gonna do them here at the bottom. So they'll be on both the left and the right. When I flip this sideways. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that and then 10 till we'll come back together and start working on that picture. I wanna make sure we have plenty of time tonight to play in flowers because this painting for whatever reason with just three daisies, I feel like I need more. I don't know if I need more daisies or if I'm going to do three daisies and then fill in with all kinds of other flowers, but I don't want to shortchange our time working on those flowers. And my goal is always to be done in two hours, to be done by nine. Okay. So now I need to flip it and figure out what's top and what's bottom. No, nope, there we go.
Okay. So again, we have about, about six minutes. So if you need to go to the blow dryer, now's the time. I'm gonna get these edges and then I'm gonna head to the blow dryer. It's funny, anytime I do one of these paintings, if I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm rushing or I'm moving too fast, I remind myself that Bob Ross did all of his paintings in 25 minutes. So two hours, I think we're doing okay. But again, if you feel like I'm moving too fast, um, take a breather, take a little break, come back to the recording, okay? All right. All right, so I'm gonna disappear for a minute and take this to the blow dryer. I'll be back. You know what? I don't even think I need to. Never mind. It's already dry. Just my nails are wet, but the rest of it's dry. Never mind. I do think I need to find some clean white though. Oh my goodness, Lily, is that your helper? <laughs> Hi, sweet baby. That's the best part of the pandemic, right? Is all the Zoom things and then being able to see everybody's pets really is the best. I'm gonna get some clean white. Oh, oh, sweet baby. I had a, um, I have a French bulldog now, Gertrude, but my French bulldog that I had before her, horrible ear infections all the time. Nothing we could do to clear them. Poor thing. Oh, will you give that baby love? Okay, so if you get, um, if you get supplies from the studio, you get paint in little two ounce containers like this, little, uh, little jello shot cups, for lack of a better term, uh, little condiment cups. If you, um, as you paint, dump this out on your plate, dump out only what you need, and then snap the lid back on nice and tight, as long as you keep the air out of here, these are good for weeks, months, as long as you keep the air out of it. So you'll have paint to use for later. And I love it. Last week, somebody messaged me. Um, I want to say Emily messaged me that after class was over, she took her extra paint and put it on canvases for her dogs. It was you. Yes. I didn't recognize the last name. Today I learned you can boil acrylic paint with a hairdryer. Oh God, <laughs> that's a hot hairdryer. Please don't boil your paint. Might want to stay a distance away. Yeah, Emily, I didn't realize that was you. I didn't recognize the last name. That's tragic, Alex. I'm sorry you boiled paint today. Or maybe it added really cool texture. Okay, so about two-ish minutes. I feel like I'm talking and I'm gonna start giving instructions and everybody's not, nobody's gonna hear me because they're still blow drying. <laughs> the, the struggle is real.
Okay, so I'm thinking about moving on, give it another minute here, but I'm mapping out now where I want my watering can. So it's not gonna touch the bottom, not quite. It's gonna be maybe two, maybe three fingers off the bottom. The top of it is gonna be about halfway. You know what, I might go a little shorter than that. That way I have plenty of room for flowers. So I might, I'll find halfway on my painting and then I might go a little lower for the top of my can. It's not gonna sit in the middle. It's gonna sit a little, just a little left of center. So there's room for the spout, but we still have some room for the handle. But the handle doesn't take up near as much room as that spout. And then your water can is really whatever shape you want it to be. So I think I'm gonna start with a, um, I'm probably gonna start with a square. The shape of this watering can is a little more like vertically rectangular. It's a little taller than it is wide. I think I'm going to go kind of square because I didn't want it to come up as high, right? I want to I want to bring my watering can down a little bit because I want more room for flowers. So I'm going to use my big brush. Let's get started on that watering can. I'm gonna use my big brush. I'm gonna clean it out, dry it off. And I'm gonna mix some blue, green, and white. So I've got my blue and green here side by side. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. Do a little mixing here. Oh, oh till you get the color you want. So Gretchen, make sure you're adding, adding enough white into your yellow so your yellow is not transparent. If you're using, uh, like my friend Gretchen, if you've decided to go with a solid color um, other than what we're doing, make sure you're adding a little bit of white to it. So all of our paint, the paint I'm using anyway, and the paint that if you got paint from the studio, it's what you're using, the student acrylic, it's lovely, but it's downside is it's all very transparent. The only way to get a nice solid color is to add either black or white to it. I don't wanna add black because that's gonna make it too dark. So I'm gonna add a little bit of white and that's gonna make my paint not transparent any longer. So let's see, what did we say? It's gonna sit two, maybe three fingers off the bottom. Kind of mapping it out here. It's gonna be not in the center, it's gonna be off a little bit. Wing it here, Let's see. And if I start with it a little small, I can always make it a little bigger, right? Not quite halfway up the canvas. Lovely, lovely square. Oh, I love that color. So let's fill it in with our solid color. We'll do a little highlighting and shading in a minute, but let's go ahead and fill it in right now. Now, when you fill it in, let's go side to side. That's gonna help here in a little bit when we get ready to do some um, shading and highlighting. So side to side. Oh, love that tail color. That's gorgeous. And if you can see your gray through there, you're going to need a little more white in your paint. The other, uh, the other option is if you can see too much, um, too much of your background through your paint. The other option is to let it dry and give it a second coat. 
Right. Okay, so there we go. Got my square on there. Mix a little more of my color. And I want to go ahead and put the top on it. The top is going to be just a little bit bigger, about maybe the width of my big brush. Maybe, maybe not quite, but it's going to overhang just a little bit. No, my top ended up being a little bit lighter. Okay with that. It's an old watering can, right? It's going to be all different shades. There we go. Okay. So I have my basic watering can shape. I have my my top on there where we pour the water in. Let's go ahead and put our handle on. If you need a smaller brush, go to a smaller brush. Remember you have a bunch of brushes in your arsenal there. Let's see, what's my handle? Again, this is solid color right now. I'll highlight and shadow here in a minute. But right now it's just solid color. And then my spout. So my spout has two different sections. It has the piece that comes out of the main pitcher and then it has the little, like there's a little shower head triangle on the end of it. So the little spout that comes out comes from the middle here, right? I feel like it should probably come from lower, but the picture has it in the middle. So that's where it's gonna be. And the top of it, before we get to the little triangle shower head, the top of it here, the top of the spout, is not taller than the pitcher. It stops right about at the pitcher height. Now the little shower head spout makes it taller, but just that first spout piece there, about as tall as your can. And I, I'm almost feeling at this point, I might need to move to a smaller brush. I'm going to use my medium brush here. So let's see. So I'm going to start as tall as my as tall as my can and come down to the middle. Work on making it a little bigger, a little bigger, a little bigger. And then put my triangle shower head on. Triangle. Oh, that's fun. So I'm still working in that one color. I'll move on to shading and highlighting here in a second. But I want to give you a few minutes to make sure you get that basic, that basic shape on there.
It's so funny because the whole time I was looking at this painting, I was thinking, I don't think I own a water can that looks like that. My water can is actually a pig <laughs> where the water comes out, it's, it's snort holes, which is kind of wrong if you think about it, but I don't think I own a traditional watering can. Okay. Oh, you guys, I'm super excited. There's a lot of room for flowers up here. This is going to be good stuff. Okay. So as you finish getting your basic, um, your basic shape on there, let's take a minute and analyze. See if we need to do anything, if we need to change anything. I feel like I want, I want this to be a little bigger. And that's entirely up to you. Fix my handle. And then I feel like I want my spout a little wider, just a little bit. So making sure we've got that basic shape the way we want it. And then we'll talk highlighting and shading. There we go. Okay. So now highlighting and shading. Let's do shading first. If you look at the original painting, there's a light side and a dark side. So let's look at our inspiration. The dark side is there by the spout and the light side is by the handle. And do you remember when I said, when we fill that original square in side to side, that's exactly how we're gonna do our highlighting and shading. We're gonna keep side to side brush strokes. So I'm gonna start with dark first. I'm gonna do my shading first. I think I'm gonna use my medium brush. You can, whatever brush makes you happy. I'm gonna use my medium brush because that's working for me right now. Clean it out and dry it off. And it's okay that this is still wet, okay? Because if this is dry and I try to do some shading, I'm gonna be laying color on top. I wanna put color on, but I wanna blend it in a little bit. And remember acrylic paint, when it dries, you can't blend it. So this is still a little wet, which is good. It's gonna help me blend some, some shade in there. So now I'm gonna go to my to my basic color without white. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna take a little blue, little green over here with no white in it. More blue than green, I think. That's just my preference. Gretchen, you're just gonna use straight yellow. Um, I've heard, I hear, I've heard a lot of things having people in class and people always ask, well, don't I wanna add a little bit of black in there to get it darker? No, because my basic color has white in it. So to shade, I'm gonna use that color without white and that's gonna make it darker. And I'm always hesitant to add black because black always has some undertone to it. Shouldn't say always, but 99% of the time it has an undertone. The black that we use has a red undertone. So I don't wanna add that with my blue and green. So blue and green, I'm gonna start here at the bottom and I'm gonna set it down and I'm gonna pull and let go. Pull and let go, pull and let go. Set it right on the edge, pull and let go. Look at that, getting that dark down there. I feel like it might wanna be a little bit darker down here at the bottom. Ooh, it wants to be dark under the spout. That would be in shadow, right? So I'm gonna go all the way up the side of this can here. At the right, I'm 
pulling, pulling left and letting go. Shading up under this spout. Oh, I want to get, this is kind of a, a rim that like rolls over. So I want to get a little dark up underneath that rim. And it's a little challenge to do because that's still wet, but that's okay. That's helping with our blend. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. So as you do this, when we shade and highlight, think about things logically. What would be in the shade, right? Down here under the spigot would be in the shade. If our, if our light source is over here, right? That's gonna be in the shade. The underside of this handle might be a little shaded. This might be a little shaded down here. Right down here at the bottom, it's gonna be a little shaded. Just kind of have to think through it logically. Okay. And wherever there is shade, there is light. So now I'm gonna rinse out. And I'm gonna go to the other end of the spectrum and just use white. Just a little bit and think about where the light might be hitting here. Just a little bit of white. Let's see, it's gonna be hitting the top of my pitcher. If it's too aggressive, just blend it in, right? That's why we're doing this while it's still wet. And if the right side is shaded, the left side is highlighted. So I'm gonna do the same thing here and pull across and let go, across and let go. I'm not using very much paint at all for this. Just a tiny bit. Let's see, I need a little, little highlight on my handle. Think about where the light's gonna hit it. Highlight right there, little kiss of light. Like there might be a little kiss of light right here. Oh, I gotta give my spout some love there. Do a little highlight along the top of that spout. Here, right at the top of that spout, that top triangle. So fun, so fun. This is one of those things you, you could really play with for forever. You could play with shading and highlighting and working your middle tones. You could really spend a lot of time on this, but my goal is to just show you the basics. Like, excuse me, I feel like I wanna let this section dry a little bit. 
And then I might come back and get a little more dark in there. I feel like once this is more dry, I could go back and add another level of really bright white. But for the interest of time, and again, we wanna spend plenty of time on those flowers. In the interest of time, we're gonna go ahead and move on. She says, as she loads her brush to play some more. Oh yeah. Oh, another little kiss of white there. It really pops. A little more right there. Okay, so I want to do um, I want to do one more thing to that picture, and then we're going to move into the flowers. So we need to give our picture a little time to dry, because I love that there's one flower that's overlapping the picture a little bit. So I want to make sure the top part of my my watering can is dry. That way I can overlay a flower and I won't pick up wet paint from the watering can. So while I'm giving that watering can time to dry, let's put some water down on the ground. So if we look at our painting, it has, there's like three little, three little sprays coming out the spout. And then there's a little bit of puddled water underneath, underneath our pitcher. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna start with my medium brush with some blue, just the blue. And whatever you do down here to help it look flat, keep your brush strokes side to side, parallel with the bottom. Don't start doing big loops of, of water because then it just looks weird. It, it throws your perspective off. So stay parallel to the bottom. Let's start with blue with our medium brush, skinny ways. Let's get, I'm gonna get close so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna get right up under this, right up under my watering can. Maybe this comes down a little bit further right up under your can. And then if this has water sprays coming out, it might have a little, a little bit of water dripping over here. Parallel to the bottom. And then let me show you how I'm going to do the the little um the little spray coming out of the coming out of the sprinkler head. Let me get a plate so I can show you up close and personal. Because this is going to help you when we start to think about um, our flower petals. May not seem like it, but it will. Oh, my plate plates are stuck. There we go. So for these three little, little sprays coming out of the can, I'm gonna take my medium brush and I'm gonna load it up with blue. Got a decent amount of paint on there. Okay, load it up with blue. And then at the last minute, I'm gonna take one swipe of white. So I've got blue on that brush, one swipe of white. So I have white outside the blue, right? That white is on top of the blue. Okay, so I've got all blue, little swish of white. Then to do those drips, I'm gonna hold this brush, 
So it's, I'm using it skinny ways. I'm not gonna use it fat ways, the way you would traditionally think to use it. I'm gonna use it skinny ways. And I'm gonna set it down, push, pull down and in and let go. I'm gonna push, pull down and in and let go. And then one more, I'm gonna push, come down and let up pressure. So there's little drips. If you use your imagination, those are flower petals. That's how we're gonna do our, our daisy flowers. So this is something I'm gonna want you to practice on because what if, Let's pretend I'm gonna do a blue daisy. Load that brush up with blue. Take a little swipe of white. And what if I set that down and I make a longer draw in and let go. And I do the same thing over and over and over. Right, you can see how I'm gonna start to get kind of a funky flower, but a flower with my center. So grab a plate, do a little practice. Those, those water drips are really good practice. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those on there. Medium brush, blue little swipe of white. I'm just gonna go, let's see, one, two, three, zoop, done. <laughs> That's fun. The water drips. Okay. Okay. So I'll give you about three minutes and then we're gonna start on flowers. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do flowers. And again, my goal is to show you the steps and then you can run with it. But I'm gonna show you how I do flowers, how I have the best luck with flowers. So let's take, let's take about a three minute break. And then I'll come back and start showing you step-by-step step how to do uh, daisy flowers. And then we'll start playing with some other kinds of flowers. And remember, if you're getting to the point that you're like, oh, Shauna Sue, you're moving too fast. Take a breather, put your brush in your water cup. Oh, sit and breathe and relax a little bit and then come back to the video, pause it, right? It'll be posted about five minutes after class is over. You can come back and pause it and rewatch it and move at your own pace then, okay? And you're gonna learn here in a couple minutes when we start on these flowers, there's a lot of little steps. but we'll talk about that in a minute. We're all so focused tonight. Okay, who's excited about class next week? I'm just super excited about that one, right? Right, Dawn's house? It's gonna be good. The funny thing is, I, I didn't anticipate anyone would pick that painting. So the picture that I'm, I have as our example is a photo, but I painted that, gosh, when was the eclipse? Three years ago? Four years ago? I painted that right after, because we went, my husband and I went to see the eclipse 
the um, total solar eclipse, we went to Sweetwater, Tennessee. And I painted that when I got back because it resonated with me. Um, so I thought it was interesting that that one was, that one was chosen for class. So I'm kind of excited about it. And we have another eclipse coming in a couple of years right across our area, which is gonna be super exciting. Okay, it's 820. Let's go ahead and start on flowers. So, let me go ahead and show you that again there's a lot of little steps i'm trying to think of the best way to do this we're just gonna go we're gonna make it happen so the way we do daisy flowers really the way we do a lot of flowers you use a brush that is going to give you a really nice, think about what the outside edge of the petal should look like. So not the center of the flower, but that outside petal. If we imagine this is the, this is the inside of my flower, that's that, that yellow center. What do I want those petals, that shape to look like? So find a brush that's gonna help you with that. And you might need to do some practicing. I think I want some big flowers to start with. That's too big, not that big. I want some bigger flowers to start with and then I'll fill in with smaller flowers. Knowing that I'm gonna start with big flowers, I think I'm gonna start with my big brush, but I'm not gonna use my big brush flat ways. I'm gonna turn it and use it skinny ways. The way I did my water drips with my medium brush. Now, you can use your big brush, you can use a medium brush, whatever brush you use, that's what's going to give you the outside edge petal of your flower. With that said, we're going to pull all of our petals into the middle, so you have to know where you're pulling those petals to. So we, we have to start, I hate saying always, but doing flowers like these, we should start with something in the center so we know what we're pulling to. This will all make sense here in just a second. I'm not even worried about the stems and the leaves. I'll put those in later. I put those in after the fact because I'm not, I'm not concerned about them. They're not the focal point. The focal point is the flowers, those flower heads. So I wanna put my flowers where they should belong and not have to match them up with where I've already put the stems. Okay, I said a lot of words. Let's talk through this. So I'm going to start with my medium brush, I think. And I'm going to put my centers in for my flowers. Now, this is not going to be the final, what the final centers look like. I'm going to mess them up, but I'll, I'll come back and fix them. So I'm going to take a little bit of white and some yellow. Again, because the yellow by itself is too transparent. So about 50-50, about half white, half yellow. And this is where we map out where we want those flowers to go. And I do love starting with three, right? In the art world, we like to think in odd numbers. So I'm gonna start with these three daisies and then I'm gonna fill in with some other fun stuff. So I want one of my flowers, the center to be right about here. I guess if I'm looking for a size, that's probably about the size of a dime, maybe. And it's just yellow and white. And then I want one, one up here. And then I want one down here. Again, I'm not super concerned about what those look like. I'll fix them later, but I have to know what I'm pulling my petals to. Okay. So now you can use your medium brush. I think I'm gonna use my big brush because I want these flowers to be big. 
So I'm going to go to my medium or my, I'm sorry, my big oval wash brush. Okay. And I'm using my one that is still decently new because he's nice and collapsed down. And I'm not going to use him the way you would think. I'm not going to use him flat ways. I'm going to turn him and use him skinny ways. Here we go. So white, I'm going to keep my daisies white. You can get a little yellow in there if you want, but I'm going to start with just white. I'll load that brush up with white. And we have a tendency when we do flowers like this, they can sometimes turn into like a windmill, like they get twisted. So to keep that from happening, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm using it skinny ways. I'm going to start out here. I'm going to push. I'm going to pull in and let up as I get close to the center. Load my brush again. Let me get close to you here. I'm going to go opposite of that. So if I have this one up here, I'm going to go opposite. I'm going to push and pull in and let go. So I'm going to create either like a plus or an X. Come out here. I'm going to push, pull in and let go and push and pull in and let go. Now that I have that roadmap, I think I can fill in. I can put maybe two or three in each one of those spaces. And by painting my flowers like that, that will, I shouldn't say guarantee me, but it will keep me from turning them into like this twisty, twisty windmill. I think I'm going to go ahead and do a plus. Push in, push in, push in. And now I think I can go back in and get one in between each one of those. Do you see as I pull in and get close to the middle? Some of them aren't even touching the middle. If that happens, you just make your center a little bigger. So I'm just putting one in between each one of those gaps. Make sure you're using plenty of paint. Ooh, that is a big, beautiful flower. That's fun. Let's see, I'm gonna play with a smaller brush this time. Remember, each brush you choose, it's gonna make your petals look a little different. So what if I use my medium brush on this next one? In daisies, always the same way, right? Do your, do your plus, go opposites, and then fill in. That'll keep you from getting a twisty, twisty, twisty windmill. Go. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this one. So step one was the center. Step two is the petals. I'm going to finish these daisies, and then we'll talk about different flowers. Okay, 
So there we go. I have three big, beautiful daisies on there. So again, step one was the center. Step two was the petal. Step three is back to the center. Because you can see these, these petals, some of them didn't touch the center. So I need to make my center a little bit bigger. These completely like obliterated my center. So I need to put them back in. So I can go ahead and do that. Now these flowers, like anything else, you can play, you can get creative, you can do a lot of fun things. You can get, before I move on to the centers, you can take a little bit of yellow and get some yellow streaks in your flowers. White doesn't always mean just like straight white. Oh, I like that. I added some yellow to that one. That's pretty. What if I add a little bit of a little bit of blue to this one? Pulling out from the middle. Oh, that's fun. Again, you can leave them plain white. You can get in there and play. Okay, so center, petals, back to the centers. So what were my centers? Yellow, a little bit of white. Go back and put that center back in. Nice. And then just like our can, our can had a light side and a dark side. I wanna pick a light side of my center and then a dark side. So I'm gonna take some white. So my center as just yellow and white is very flat. So I'm gonna take some white and I'm doing this while this yellow center is wet and I'm blending a little bit of white right there on top. And if I do light on top, I have to do dark on the bottom. So white on top. Blend that a little more. Again, you can spend a lot of time playing. But my goal is to just show you some techniques. And if I do light on top, I have to do dark under. So I'm taking a tiny bit of orange, tiny, tiny bit. Because it's going to feel like a lot when you do it. So a tiny, tiny bit. So orange on the bottom. Tiny, tiny bit, blend it down in there. There you go. Okay. Clean my brush out and do that again. So this center, white on top. Give it a nice little kiss of sunlight there, a nice little highlight on top. And do this one while I've got white on my brush. White on top. Clean your brush out. Little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of orange. Blend it in on the bottom. And there we go, we've added dimension to our centers, to the centers of our daisies. 
And then the last thing to do to our daisies is to add some stems. Stems, maybe some leaves. Ooh, something you could do if you wanted to play a little more in those daisies. This is fun. I have my small brush and I'm gonna use the other end of it. I guess it's my medium brush. Use my small brush and use the other end of it. Get a little bit of orange. And I can go in here and, and tap, tap, tap with a little bit of orange. The super subtle things, but it's a lot of fun. It looks like little little pollen there. Oh, that's fun. I like the texture that it gives. So play, experiment, see what makes you happy. I like those, li those little orange dots there. Do, 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 do. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put stems on and then we'll talk about different flowers. So for my stems, pointy brush, and I'm going to use green, yellow, and white because green by itself is just too boring, right? I'm going to use, I'm going to take a little swipe of my phthalo green and over here in my yellow and white that I already have, do a little bit of mixing there. That's going to give me a really cool limey color. Use that for my stems. So I'm going to have my stems just kind of disappear right up in between those, right up in between those petals. Oh, that's pretty. This guy doesn't really have one. I guess he might right in here. And then this guy right about there. Zoop. And then what do your leaves look like? The leaves in the original painting point down. I don't think I want mine to point down. I think I want mine, mine up. So you can use your medium brush if you want. I'm going to use my, my pointy brush and get them nice and pointy. So I have my small round pointy brush. I'm going to set it down just like I would petals. Set it down and pull it in and let it up. Got one brush stroke. Load my brush again. I'm going to set it down, push, pull in and let up. There we go. All my little leaves. Okay. All right, Alicia. Let's talk about our our little um our little wheat dudes. Okay. So for my little wheat dudes, now that I have the, the lay of the land for those big flowers, now you can go ahead and put stems in first if you want. You can break that rule. But I didn't want to put my stems in first for these. We talked about that, right? because I didn't want to have to put flowers where my stems ended. I wanted to place those flowers and then go from there. So now that that's all done, now I can go ahead and start to fill in the gaps with some other flowers. And I can go ahead and put stems on now, stems later. For our little wheat looking flowers, Alicia, I'm gonna go ahead and we have to put the stems in first. So I'm gonna use my my green, yellow, white, and I'm gonna put in some fine little stems here. Which one? 
let's see what else. There we go. Okay, my little wheat looking flowers. So whichever brush makes you happy, your medium brush, your small brush, depending on how dainty you want these to be. I think I'm gonna use my small brush. I want them to be, I want them to be pretty dainty. And I think, I'm trying to decide what color I wanna use. I think orange, I think orange. So I'm gonna do those with the same technique that I did my water drips here. I'm gonna find my color that makes me happy, which is orange. And then I'm gonna add that little swipe of white right on the end to give me that little highlight on those little dudes. So pick your color and then a little shoop of white right there on the end. And for these guys, again, you don't have to do these, they're not in the original. But for these, you're just like our daisies, you have to pull into your stem, you have to pull into the middle. So I'm gonna start out here at the end and I'm gonna pull in and let go. And then I'm gonna left, down a little right, down a little left, down a little right, down a little left. Let me show you. Left, down a little to the right, down a little left, down a little right, down a little left. See how I'm offsetting those? And because I put the white on top, it ran out first. So I have this lovely highlight and then it gets deep and dark as I go down. Oh, that's fun. I'm gonna do that again. I, I really like the orange. Ooh, that makes me happy. Okay, so orange, swipe a white. I'm gonna get close one more time here. So do that end one first. Let go. Left, right, left, right, left, right. I'm gonna do a couple more of these and then I might get some, ooh, some little purple, Lynn, our little purple forget-me-not looking flowers. <gasps> ooh, crocuses, I forgot about our crocuses. Let's see, these guys might be yellow instead of orange. I hope you guys are having fun with flowers tonight. These are a lot of fun. I'm a firm believer when it comes to flowers, more is better. I want a riot of color in that watering can. That was the only thing when I saw this original picture. It's like, oh, we need more flowers. Let's see. See me turning my painting to make life easier for myself, right? Remember, you're not bolted into place. You turn that painting however it's more com most comfortable for you. Okay. Now I want to get some little purple dudes in there. Let's see my little purple dudes. I need my centers to pull to. So I'm gonna go back just like I did my daisies. If you're doing a, a flower like a daisy that has the petals on the outside and the center, you always have to have that center to pull to. So let me go ahead and put some little, some little centers on here. 
So I'll have like one right here, one up here, and down here. All my little centers. Oh no, I don't have red. I can't do purple. I have red in my bag. Oh, you guys, this got this has me in the spring mood. Let's see. I think my little forget me nots might only have four or five petals. They're not gonna have a ton of petals like the like my daisies. <laughs> so fun. Every time I load my brush with this next color, it's a little bit different. I like that. So purple isn't just purple. I've got light, I've got lavender, I've got dark. Exploring the entire palette of color tonight. Here we go. Oh, that's fun. Let's see, what other kind of flowers should we talk about? I'm trying to decide if I want some more of these little wheat, wheat kind of flowers. Oh no, I think I want a little purple forget me not down here on the ground. That's what I want. Somebody that fell out of the can. No, near the center. <laughs> Little dude fell out. Oh, I could keep going. I feel like I need some little tiny white daisies in here. You know what? What the heck? Why not? Right? So keep going, keep playing, keep having fun. Do what makes your heart happy. If you get to the point that you think you might be done, you're not sure, take a break, take a picture of it on your phone and then step back and look at that picture. And then you'll know if you're done. That, that's usually how I know. I have to step back and look at it on my phone. I'm going to put some little, some little white 
wheat flowers in here. And I might be done. Okay, so I'm going to get ready and, uh, and stop the recording. Again, I will, as soon as the recording's over, I'll give you the opportunity to unmute and we can talk a little bit if you want. Um, but for this recording, the last thing you want to do is sign your painting. Um, a lot of artists sign on the front, so usually bottom left or bottom right. This one, I almost think it would be fun if you sign, you break the rule and sign right there on the can, like on the side of the can. If you don't wanna sign on the front, you can sign on the back. But if you sign on the back, never here, always out here. If you sign here, it could bleed through to the front, okay? So I think I, think I might call this done. Since I have a black paint pen, I'm just gonna sign down here in the corner and you get to decide what your artist's signature is. Mine is SS bloop, and then I like to put the year so I know what year I created it. So there we go, finished. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording now, so bear with me. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm Shauna Sue. Thank you for joining me for Painting Through the Pandemic. It's been a lot of fun tonight. I'm ready for, ready for springtime, for some warmer weather. So um, we'll be here every Saturday night at seven o'clock. Hope to see y'all next week. All right, thanks so much.